Hi everybody, I'm Naomi Reisner and I'm here at Borough Hall with Spencer Hewlett. Uh, I'm standing in front of the Belmar Historical Society's display case where we uh, have a rotating exhibit where we can display some of our archival material. Um, if you want to come and see it, be sure to enter through the 6th Avenue entrance uh, right now between the hours of 10 and 2. Today, Spence and I are taking you to the movies. Um, most of the theaters that I will be talking about uh, are on Ocean Avenue, except the first one. The first one is called the Happy Hour Theater. Uh, it was next to the Belmar Post Office on 10th Avenue. And we know through research that the, t the post office was indeed located on 10th Avenue at one time. This ad is from our digitized newspaper collection, and it features a movie, Fun After the Wedding. And I looked it up, and it said it was an eight-minute short film comedy. The Happy Hour Theater also had vaudeville acts, and of course all the movies were silent movies. Now we go up to the ocean uh, area, and we have the gem. The Gem was an open-air theater and it was located on the boardwalk between 4th and 5th Avenues. This newspaper article states that it, there was a need for an experienced operator and an electrician in order to make the pictures show up clearly. This theater, this open-air theater, had a capacity of 800 people and the music was provided by a pianist. Uh, next we have up on the oceanfront the Aerodrome. This ad in a 1909 uh, newspaper article states that tonight we're showing Ethel Barrymore in The Nightingale. And I looked that one up and that was a 1915 silent movie where Ethel Barrymore made her movie debut. The cost was 10 cents. Next we have The Seashell. The seashell was located at 8th and Ocean Avenue. And these were all seasonal, of course, theaters. Next we take you to the Rialto. Everybody remembers the Rialto. You know, the one with the leaky roof. But you, what you may not know, when it opened in 1918 at the corner of 8th and Ocean Avenues, it was in a old merry-go-round building. The merry-go-round closed and the building was sold and it was renovated into an 800 seat indoor theater. An organ was purchased at the cost of $7,500 and an expert player engaged to give the very finest music. We have an ad from a newspaper for a movie called To Hell with the Kaiser was showing at the Rialto. And that's 1918, of course, a silent movie. And the admission was 20 cents plus two cents war tax for children, adults 30 cents and three cents war tax. And next we have a poster of the new Rialto Theater at 8th and Ocean Avenues. This night is going to be a benefit night to, for the Supply Committee for the Belmar Boys in Service. Come and help a good cause. Admission 20 cents, war tax 2 cents. Uh, the, the Rialto Theater was remodeled in 1940. And I remember as a youngster going there, it was great fun to look forward to going to the movies on a rainy afternoon when you couldn't go to the beach. The Rialto was demolished in 1967 after being vacant for several years. Today, there's a 7-Eleven convenience store on that corner. Here we have a movie reel that was actually used in the Bradley Cinema. It was donated to us by the projectionists who used to work there. Today, almost all the theaters have gone digital. And now I'm going to turn it over to Spence, who's going to take you to another movie theater, very popular. Thank you, Naomi, for detailing our part of our display here today. I'm going to bring your attention now to another part of our display, and it deals primarily with the theater that I consider to, to have been the most prominent theater in Belmar history. We have here a picture of brownies and Girl Scouts marching in a parade down Main Street, and in the background is the Rivoli. 
the, the Rivoli wasn't always in the background. At one time, it was considered and stood out as a premier play, playhouse in the area. When it first opened in 1925, it had been built on the same plot as the Belmar Theater, an earlier theater that was demolished after, after following a fire. At the time, there were only silent films so that we have here a playlist of what was playing at the Belmar Theater and they were all silent movies and one of them was Wives Against Wives. That must have been an interesting silent movie. Uh, you also have um, The Swamp, Rent Free, The Invisible Fear, Under the Lash. They were all silent films because that theater, as I said, was had a fire in around 1923-24. Following that, after uh, 20, in 1925, the uh, Rivoli was built and it too initially just had silent films. The thing about that theater though, it installed a large piano and organ and had room for an orchestra, which enhanced the experience by, by accompanying the cinema with music. My dad told me that my grandmother, Dorothy Wilson Hewlett, was one of the pianists. By the 1930s, most films had sound and sound dialogue, and the Rivoli was able to adapt to the technology. We have several posters at the museum which announced what was to be featured at the theater. The poster we have here lists Little Egypt, Angels in the Outfield, Tall Target, and Here Comes the Groom. Now, T Tall Target was kind of an interesting movie and notable to me because it dealt with a New York detective efforts to foil an attempt to assassinate President Lincoln on his train ride to Baltimore before his inauguration. We have several of these posters, like I said, at our museum from different years. In the 1950s and 60s, I got to experience the Rivoli. Many times my friends and I would go see a Saturday matinee. Disney, Westerns, Elvis, or horror films were the most popular. If you weren't getting popcorn at the theater, you might stop by the Sugar Bowl next door, which had every kind of candy imaginable, including Good and Plenty, Milk Duds, Junior Mints. A couple of them might be some of my favorites, but it, there was usually some others that I preferred. But they had them all. Uh, one of the best days of the year was just before Christmas. Belmar kids were treated to a show in a school auditorium, but then we were marched across the street to the Rivoli for an exciting day of laughter and merriment. The firemen would make sure everyone spoke to the real Santa and got to go home with a bag full of goodies. This tradition started way back before I was even born, as we show in a picture of kids, a picture of happy kids in front of the Rivoli in 1938, just before the holiday season. The theaters in our display should be remembered as serving the community by providing first-rate entertainment in their time. Our hope is it brings back fond memories to some and is interesting to others. And talking about memories and bringing back the old times, Belmar will be celebrating its 150th anniversary next year, and we hope to have some further entertainment and festivities for that occasion. So keep uh, your attention to what I hope uh, the Belmar Historical Society in the borough of Belmar, uh, we're hoping that we have some programs that will celebrate that event. I hope everyone has good memories of the past and have enjoyed this presentation of our uh, current display. We will have further displays in the future and um, I hope you'll, you'll uh, join us again then. Thank you.